I'm Jennifer Brown and I'm a keynoter and an author and I run a consulting company in the diversity, equity and inclusion space. And we focus on inclusive leadership and I, I'm very fascinated with the process of change that we go through in our journey towards becoming more inclusive. And I wanted to develop a model that had some clear stages for our journey because I wanted to demystify it, I wanted to make it accessible for people, and I wanted to simplify the f and acknowledge the fact that it is a journey with steps, but that it is sometimes a journey of one step forward, two steps back. So let me explain. Uh, there are four stages of the journey, and I call the first stage unaware and when we are in unaware we don't think there's a problem we don't know what the problem is of inclusion and exclusion and diversity we may uh, not agree with the pursuit of that concept uh, we may uh, even think we're a good person at heart and think that there's already we are already doing so much towards uh, something like equality as a goal so when we're in unaware, we, uh, we need to wake up, I think. And I feel that le learners often wake up through a story, through an anecdote, through somebody's personal experience, through a piece of data or a, a piece of research that really hits them. Um, we all wake up out of unaware in different ways. But the important thing is that we awaken. And once we awaken, we move into the second phase, which is aware. And in aware, we are seeing. Now we know what we don't know. We are noticing. We are collecting information. We are uh, uh, beginning to build out our understanding of things like our own biases, the way that we grew up, the things that we were told or not told uh, or taught in school. Um, and it elicits sometimes often a, a feeling of perhaps regret, uh, perhaps it's painful to be made aware, particularly when it's either an awareness around your own painful or challenging experience of identity, or it's somebody else's experience that you didn't know. And um, so this is that, that stage of awakening, it is learning, it is gathering information, is exposing ourselves to all the richness of lived experiences around us. And it's an incredible opportunity to learn about all of that. Uh, but then what do we do with that knowledge? Do we just sit on it? Do we marinate on it? Does it change us privately? But we never really go public with it. That's why I call the next phase active. And in active, we take that awareness and that knowledge and we take it on the road. We begin to use it. We begin to experiment with language and uh, speaking different truths, uh, sharing something that's not perceptible about us, uh, storytelling, and maybe taking more risks with others. And this is a period and a phase of experimentation. It is, it is probably awkwardly getting things not quite right, not knowing what to say. And I think a lot of us are here in this year, 2022. We, we've learned a lot, we've been shown a lot, but we're not quite sure what to do with it. And uh, we, we do a lot of work here. I support a lot, of, a lot of leaders in this phase who are questioning, who am I to speak about this topic? Perhaps people of certain lived experiences think that they don't know anything about diversity and it hasn't touched their lives, which is never really true. Uh, but we, we dig into that together. We explore some you know, elements of our personal lived experiences, our families, our loved ones, our teammates at work. We always do know something about this topic. And the important thing is an active to begin to use our voice, to begin to do whatever we might have been doing privately and quietly and begin to lead, begin to shine a light, begin to uh, broach the topic, begin to put ourselves into the arena, right? And that's where we learn. That's where we develop the muscle of inclusive leadership and, and experiment and strengthen our competency and also awaken our confidence in ourselves to be inclusive leaders. And then finally, the, the, the final phase is phase four, which is advocate. And I think, you know, I, I, I think of this as an aspirational phase. It's a, it's, a, it's a destination that we could hope for. It's hard to live there because some of us are always having the conversations, always uh, seeking change and, and giving difficult, having difficult conversations and giving that feedback and uh, pushing on the systems around us and challenging them to be different, to be better, and pushing on our peers to be different and to be better. 
So advocate level, you know, advocacy is strong and it's insistent and it's loud and it's uh, confident and it's relentless. And, uh, you know, so some of us can be there around certain aspects uh, for me in the LGBTQ community because I've been in that community for multiple decades. It's it's very comfortable place for me to be phase four because I know it well and I know how to use my voice. But there's other identities there that I find myself in phase two, for example, earlier in my journey where there's more learning that I have to do. There's more uh, deepening of my knowledge. There's more self-awareness that I need to build. There's more language that I need to familiarize myself with so that I can step into active and then someday into advocate. So all of these things can be true for us. We can be in multiple places. And what I encourage people to do is to settle in for the journey of evolution because this is literally a, an upgrade of our operating system. It is a retooling of everything that we've used or known in the past, but it is, a, it is, a, it, it is looking again at a, perhaps a deeper way to show up uh, and to be a voice for inclusion around us. And I think that's what the world desperately needs is for more of us to be on this journey and to be articulating what that looks like and sounds like and uh, to be normalizing, or as I like to say, usualizing that journey in ourselves and in others around us so that we can shift institutions towards a more equitable outcome.